that, that was his mission. That was his goal or his, his purpose in his first advent was to be the sacrificial lamb. For him to be born in the same place where the sacrificial lambs were would be very significant. And so the shepherds that came to see him, because it was the shepherds that saw him first, would have been the very shepherds that were tending to the flocks that were used for the sacrifices in Israel. And here, he's fulfilling a picture of what they're actually doing, and that's why they came. Do you see, do you see that? Okay, all right. I wasn't sure if I was being clear there, but uh, anyway, that is where, I'm sorry, I said Zephaniah, it is, it's Micah, it's Micah. Um, and you, O tower of the flock, it's saying that the kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem is going to come there. So it's, even though it's not specifically mentioned in the New Testament, he was born in Bethlehem, but it's somewhere in the area of Bethlehem, it could have been right where they kept the sacrificial lamb. So very interesting, but it's not something that we can say dogmatically. Okay? And four eight. And here we are. We're going back to Genesis. Uh, uh, and the problem is the reason why it's so hard finding these things is because one translation will say Tower of the Flock. One will say Tower of Adair. One of them will say Migdal of the Flock. You know what I'm saying? People translate these differently. It's the same words. It's hard to remember, and then you go into here, you don't know the, the concordance. Did they translate it this way? So you end up spending a lot of time looking for something that you shouldn't have to. But it's good because it gives you, if you see everything the same all the time, you don't think differently. But if you read different translations of the Bible, you say, wait a minute, I saw that somewhere else. It reminds you of something that maybe you wouldn't have thought of in a different way. So it is good to read different translations simply because it helps you think differently. Okay, so here we are. We're in... Uh, Genesis uh, 45, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was kidding. I, I was kidding. Yeah, I was joking. Okay, please, go ahead. And it came about while Israel was dwelling in that land. I'm going to speak on this exact verse Sunday. I don't even know if I want to, in the in Sunday, Sunday morning. Yep, this is, this is part of what I'm going to speak on Sunday morning. So I don't want to give too much away, but I, here we are. It's funny that this always seems to happen. You know, the things I'm going to... It's so deep. Give it to us now, and maybe we'll understand. Uh, well, all I... No, no. This will be... You know how I say when you, I do a sermon, you do a life application, and then you have, you have doctrine and you have application. This is under the application. This is more a story that I'm throwing in to make a point. So it, it, this part won't... This won't. What I'm doing is I'm equating it with something that's going on in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. If you want to read that later, don't read it now. Um, okay, so go ahead. 1 Corinthians. Chapter, well, let's go there first. No, I'll read that. No, I'll just yeah, read it on there. my own so that next Sunday. Who I'll wants to go there and who wants to not go there? It, it won't take just a minute. I, I, you'll, get a, you'll get a foretaste of the sermon and you can sleep through this part. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I was asked. Um, Seth, we're starting uh, apparently a, uh, uh, a series on 1 Corinthians, and Seth asked what I like to preach, and I thought, you know, I really don't want to, I really, because I'm busy with what I'm doing now, and I'm going to say this in church, just so you know, don't tell your mom, but your mom's face came to my mind, oh, I and I thought, she's going to be so angry if I don't. Now, her mother is always whining that, I missed your sermon, I missed your sermon, and so... I, I, I thought, if I was to say, I'm not going to preach here, your mom found out she would be really upset. So I'm going to say that in church, so don't say anything about that to Linda, okay? Anyway, I'm going to embarrass her in church, in other words. But uh, I, 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 uh, I said, um, yeah, they w well, you know, if their flight gets canceled or something, that way, <laughs> I, they will. First Corinthians chapter 5, and Seth asked, he said, I didn't know that I was going to be the first speaker on 1 Corinthians. And he said, well, what chapter do you want to speak? And I just said, 1 Corinthians 5. I mean, I knew immediately because of a particular verse that I use for a different thing. But anyway, it says here, it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and such sexual immorality is as not even named among the Gentiles, that a man has his father's wife. Okay. There you go. What we're going to speak about right now in Genesis, he says, even the Gentiles don't do this, yeah. and yet this has been going on in, in the Jewish nation. It's like a slap on his own people. So go ahead. 35 whatever. Um, 22. 22. And, and it came about while Israel was dwelling in that land that Reuben went uh -huh. and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard of it. Okay, now you do remember that Bilhah 
was the maidservant of either Leah or Rachel. I think she was the maidservant of Leah. Okay. He had two wives. He wanted to marry Rachel, but the father deceived him. You know his name. He is a deceiver. Well, he got deceived against. Um, uh, and he gave her the older daughter, Leah, who had the, the weak eye, probably a lazy eye. Anyway, so he ended up marrying this girl he didn't want, and then he had to work seven more years to get the girl he did want. So he's got two wives. Well, the younger one, Rachel, couldn't have children. So she got jealous, and she gave her husband her maidservant to have children for her. Okay, that was a custom that they would do. The maidservant would actually sit on the knees of Rachel and give birth as a picture of her giving birth, even though she wasn't giving birth. So here we have, you don't know the story, so I'll show you. Okay, um, Israel marries, um, didn't want to, but he ended up marrying Leah. Okay, and then... Uh, because he wanted Rachel, the father says, well, I didn't mean to deceive you, but it's not our tradition to give away the old, yeah. He wanted him to stay, and we talked about why. But anyway, he said, um, it's not our tradition to give away the oldest first, so take her, have her for a week, and then we'll give you the, the younger daughter, but you've got to work for me seven more years, because he was being blessed because Jacob was a hard worker. Okay, so he gets Leah. After seven days, he marries Rachel, R-A-C-H-E-L, the one that just died. Okay, so now he's got two wives. Well, Leah pops out four boys right away. Okay, and so this girl, Rachel, is jealous. And she says, have a baby for me. He gives her the maidservant, who is, I think it's Bilhah. It might be, uh, there's Zilpah and Bilhah. There's two maidservants. Anyway, Bilhah is the one we're talking about now. But anyway, so she has babies for her. All right, well, Leah stops giving birth after a, a few boys or a few girls or what, uh, boys and a girl. And so what she does is she gives Israel her maidservant, we'll say, I don't know which one is which, but we'll say this one is Bill Ha and this one is Zilpa. Anyway, um, so now he's stuck with four wives and they're just having kids like crazy. He ends up with 12 boys and a daughter. 12 boys and, and a daughter named Dinah, D-I-N-A-H, okay? So he's got these four wives. They call her a concubine here because he never officially married them, but they're the maidservants of Leah and Rachel. But Reuben, who's one of the sons of Leah, oh, okay. This is how it would go, because Reuben would not, I don't think, have slept. I don't want to say that. Anyway, Reuben, the oldest son of Israel, went and slept with his, either his mother's or his um, second mother's uh, maidservant. So, I mean, this lady was, you know, she watched him born. She watched him raised, you know. And plus, this is his father's wife, basically, even though it's not officially a wife. He slept with her. So that's recorded here, and there's a reason why this is recorded. We're not going to get into it yet. Um, we won't get into it until... Ge Let's get into it, because it, Genesis 49 will repeat it. Here's what happened. you got 12 children. The first is Reuben. Who is it in Israel that gets the birthright and the blessing? The eldest. The eldest, okay? Because he did this thing here, Israel said, you will not receive the birthright and the blessing. He lost the right. Now that's really important because this all points to if that didn't happen, then the Messiah would have, it, it, well, it, 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 it's supposed to, that's right, but it, it wasn't outside of the providence of God to know that all these things were going to happen, okay? But anyway, he should have inherited the birthright and the blessing, and he didn't. Instead, the sons of Joseph were given the birthright. When Jacob blessed Joseph, when he was in Israel, he brought the two boys, and you have Manasseh, who's the oldest, and Ephraim, the younger, and Joseph crossed his hands, and he blessed the younger over the older, the second replacing the first, again and again and again in the Bible. Okay, so he blesses him. Ephraim becomes blessed, which is, well, I won't get into that now, but Ephraim is, is a picture of the Gentiles coming into the church, being grafted in, okay? So just so you know that. Anyway, so Reuben lost the birthright, and then we're going to, Oh, we've already talked about it, so I'll tell you. We have the next one in line is Levi. I'm sorry, Simeon, S-I-M-E-O-N, Simeon. And then the next one after that is Levi, okay? They what? The, right, okay. And then after that comes Judah. Judah is fourth in line, all right? So why did the Messiah not come through Reuben? Because he defiled his father's bed recorded in Genesis 49. We'll go there in a second. Why did Simeon and Levi not receive the Messiah through them? What? Uh, was it, uh, priestly. 
No, that's afterward. They, they don't know that yet. That's, that's many years later. Why, did, why is it that they were rejected for this purpose? We've already gone through it. We've already talked about it about a week and a half ago. Actually, we talked about it the last chapter. The last chapter. What did they do? What did Simeon, what did Simeon and Levi do? Town of Shechem. These two guys killed an entire town in their anger. And so they're rejected. And so it falls to the fourth son, Judah, for the Messiah to come through. So, and where do we see that? What? I'm sorry. That's no, okay. For Simeon and Levi, the, the, the sons that killed because of Dinah? Dinah. Yes. That's right. Oh, okay. Dinah. They were protecting the honor of their sister. Okay. But, and who else almost killed somebody in his anger and was withheld from doing it and it saved him from a similar curse? Later in the Bible... Somebody went in and he says, I'm going to kill, you know, I'm going to use this term just so you know the Bible says it. It says, we're going to go in and kill everybody that pisses against a wall. That's the way the Hebrew reads, just so you know, okay? In other words, every male. Who was it that was going to go and kill every male in a per particular household? Herod. Well, no, no, much, much earlier than that. Still in the line, and it would have caused him the same type of grief. One of the kings? Is it one of the kings? The second king. King David. No. David. No. David. Okay. All right. David. Now, here's what he did. actually did kill somebody. Well, he went in to kill Nabal. Remember Nabal? He was protecting the... Have a wonderful week. Take care now. I will. All right. So, Nabal was the, the, the rich man, and he wouldn't give David anything. Okay? And so, David says, we've been protecting this guy all this time. He says, we're going in. We're going to kill them. We're going to take all the food that we need. And who saved... Abigail. His, Abigail. His wife. Nabal's wife, Abigail, saved David from making exactly the same mistake as Simeon Levi did, and it would have cost him in the end. Abigail went and said, let the blame be on me. A couple days later, Nabal ends up dying. It says he, his body became like a stone. Maybe he had a heart attack or a, 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 epilep or a seizure. Or, no, what is it called? A stroke? Anyway, that was uh, the end of Nabal, and so what does David do? He marries right. Abigail, his first wife. So, and she, she was not the mother of the line of the Messiah. That was Bathsheba. But anyway, um, he became the first, she became the first wife of King David because of her faithfulness and for protecting David from making the same mistake and would have caused him a problem. So if we go to Genesis 49, it says here, uh, and I'm going to quote this in church, so you don't have to listen in church on Sunday, but it says, Reuben, verse 3, Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, you shall not excel, because you went up to your father's bed. He defiled it. Okay? And then it goes down here, the next verse, Simeon and Levi's are brothers. Instruments of cruelty are in their dwelling place. Let my soul not enter. What kind of a blessing is this? Let my soul not enter their council. Let not my honor be united to their assembly. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they hamstrung, hamstrung an ox. Cursed be their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will divide them in Jacob, and scattered them in Israel. That prophecy was fulfilled how? Dividing them in Jacob. We'll go over it again in a couple weeks or whenever, but Levites became, here's the land of Israel again. Levites were everywhere. They were in every town in Israel. Okay? They weren't a, a, a unified clan. All the other clans were given partitions of land, right? Dividing the land up like this, and down at the bottom is Judah. So everybody had their own partitions of land. There was a big petition of land over here for two of the tribes as well. But they all had their own place. But the Levites were scattered in Israel, just as he said. And then Simeon never got their own land because they, Judah had too much property. They had this giant amount of land. And so what they did is they said, you come and live with us. And so Simeon basically disappeared because they're all scattered within Judah. This is known as Judah, but actually Simeon is there. So that prophecy that he made for his sons was literally fulfilled. So that's why when we bless somebody, we need to be careful. And when we curse somebody, we need to really be careful because words have power to God. Blessings have real power to God. So we need to be careful with our own words. Um, so it says uh, they, they will be scattered in Israel, and they were, exactly as he said. Then it goes on and it says um, um, uh, Judah. Okay, Judah's a lion's whelp from uh, the prey. My son, you have gone up. He bows down. He lies down as a lion, as a lion who shall rouse him. The scepter... 
shall not depart from Judah. What is a scepter? 